So it seems to me that Clay woke up and chose Anarchy Everyone, as not only did they release one of the most influential updates of all time, but some previous content has also gone and gotten a bit of a refresh as well. Both Brightshade and Void Gear sets have been tweaked, and if you don't believe me for whatever reason, or you're just too infatuated with the new skill trees there to see any of this, here's the official post to set you straight, but let's discuss. And we begin with a major change to how we maintain our fresh post endgame equipment here, as lo and behold, we now have an option to actually maintain the stuff in the first place. It doesn't matter if it's a weapon, tool, or armor piece, they will all now rest at 0% durability instead of breaking following this update, requiring a very special repair kit to get them back up to snuff. The Bright Shade Repair Kit costs one pure brilliance and one Bright Shade Husk at a Bright Smithy, of course, while the Void Kit follows suits, but, you know, needs the appropriate nonsense and all that. It's great stuff though, so make notes. But next up, the Puffed Up Umbrella Tweak. The thing still works all all the same as before if it's in our hands proper, but if used on the ground now, it provides a rather large safe area that fully protects against any rain, including the acid rain of the caves of course. You can see this thing's quote unquote sphere of influence here I hope, as it's pretty darn clear, however do be also clear about the fact that while it's in this state, the umbrella will not be able to recharge under said acid rains at all, but enjoy it. To continue though, Clay has unfortunately done away with with some of my enjoyment when it comes to some of those armor set bonuses that they've been toying with of late, but in their place comes something way simpler. Exclusivity of Noggin Toppers. In short, moving forward, all we will need are the headpieces to benefit from any of their corresponding gear abilities, like how I am using the Shadow Reaper's charge ability without the full void armor here. Or like how a Bright Shade Staff will still be able to jump between 6 mobs over the original 4 with just a helmet on. Now, this is honestly a massive tweak, all things considered, even if I am sad that the set armor bonuses are gone far too soon. Still, I cannot deny how satisfying it's gonna be to start dealing some big time damages quickly with just two crafts instead of three. But now that we're on the topic of our new armor sets, let us talk about how else Clay has gone and questionably changed our new armor sets. Folks, apparently we're all shadow line now, no matter what, as the void crap no longer drains our sanities. Like, at all. So bye bye another set bonus there, as they used to actually half each other if you remember. But Dreadstone has also received the very same treatment, even though the sanity drain synergizing with this armor's regen was the entire flipping point. However, the drains do return if either one are damaged, so there's that I guess. To continue, here's this too, as the void armor specifically now just negates every negative sanity aura ever, be that from a monster, or the environment, or otherwise. And I mean, it makes sense I suppose, but again, why? And furthermore, neither one of the Void Armor pieces can grant us Acid Rain immunity following today, and yet to both are still immune to the Acid Rain themselves, which doesn't make a lick of sense to me. But finally, and likely the highlights in all this, the Bright Shade Helm's new ability to prevent Charlie is pretty stellar, and the armor reflecting 10 damage absolutely makes sense, but it's probably still gonna need a unique animation to make it all make a little more sense at the end of the day. But yeah, I'm not too sure what we're doing here, Clay, it seems like these tweaks are all over the place, as while I do agree with the idea of giving all this gear a proper glow up considering when and where we get them, I'm not too sure how enticing some of this is gonna be. But you know what else won't make too much sense until we explain it all? The Ancient Guardian's newest blueprints, the Pillar Scaffold. Dropped by the rumbling, stumbling, and fumbling big bad down in the ruins, the structure can be made via a single cut stone and board, but that's just the start. Place it down wherever you please, but press Preferably in a place where you'd actually want to keep safe from Earthquake's mind, and you'll notice that you'll also be needing 40 rocks to complete the dang thing as well. Do so, and things get rather interesting, as while you'll likely guess that those pillars are going to help protect a large area from Don't Starve Together's newest Riftquakes, you might be as surprised as me to learn that they stop all Earthquake drops in a huge radius as well. Not entirely sure how these massive buildings are going to fit in people's pre-existing builds down here, but hey, that's not my problem. Don't shoot the messenger, as they say. But I do sort of have a problem with this update as a whole, as it feels like we're just throwing things at a wall and seeing what sticks, instead of actually hearing the feedback, planning ahead, because only you know what you're doing, Clay, and then just everything that those both entail. 
And the worst part is that we players still don't know what any of this means until part three of From Beyond comes out from you, which could be months away. I don't know. The game's feeling a bit shaky for me right now. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish to all more skill tree deep dives to come, I believe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.